this cancer that this white society is putting towards the Aboriginal people, but also any other person that isn't being in jail can be attacked for the same cancer. Last month, another Aboriginal man died in Alice in custody. Every time someone dies in custody, whatever, police, prison officers, even health officers, got an excuse. Every time is an excuse. This one, this time, is incredible. I don't want to talk about I want. I prefer that Ray, Ray Jackson explain more in detail. But what I'm saying is, we are here because we said, since the construction of the national campaign for death in custody, that every time a death in custody happened, we be around telling everyone there's another person die in jail when when someone has the duty of care no one goes to jail to die the death penalty doesn't exist in this country if you go to jail for any reason you got the right to survive not to die and that's why we are here I'd just like to remind you that we are all on the traditional lands of the Gadigal people, the stolen lands of the Gadigal people. Always was, always will be Aboriginal lands. 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 Always was. Okay, we are here for three reasons at least today to point the finger at corrective services not only in the Northern Territory but also New South Wales, also South Australia. Now the point is the death of uh, Mr. Clark up in the Northern Territory. He came out of Alice Springs Jail. He then got very, very sick and he finished up being transferred to the Alice Springs Hospital. At the Alice Springs Hospital they gave him a other signs as well. They found out he was put into intensive care into an induced coma. Now Mr. Clark, a 56 year old Aboriginal man born and bred in Alice, was no major criminal, not by any stretch of the imagination. And yet, Northern Territory Corrective Services found the need to shackle him by his left leg to the bed. This was no Mr. Big, not in the scheme of things. In the scheme of things, he was just an Aboriginal man. He got caught by having some dope and he got three and a half years for it. Anybody else, I believe, would have been given a much lighter sentence. But there we have Mr. Clark in the ICU shackled by his left leg with a guard in the room. Mr. Clark could not possibly get up and do anything. So why there was a guard there 
and why it was necessary to shackle him, we just do not know. Five days before he was to get his parole, Mr. Clark became very ill. Nine days after he should have got his parole, Mr. Clark was still in an induced coma and still in the ICU. In fact, he died in the ICU. He never recovered. Automatically, under the Royal Commission recommendations 6A and B, the matter should have been treated as a death in custody. Even the superintendent of Alice Springs Jail believed that his death would be treated that way. And yet, the argument now is that somehow or other, Mr. Clark was paroled whilst he was in a coma. Whilst he was in a coma and could not understand anything, could not sign anything, could not read anything, somehow or other, the custodians believed that he had been paroled and he therefore was not a death in custody. This spat in the face of Mr. Clark's family. The callousness of what corrective services had done to the Clark family was beyond reproach. It was disgusting and should never have happened. Mr. Clark died, transferred from Alice Springs Hospital. He died, uh, Alice Springs Jail, sorry. He died in the Alice Springs Hospital in a non compass mental state. He had not been paroled under any circumstances. The registrar of the ICCU, Dr. Raj, says he rang the coroner's court in the Northern Territory and they told him it was not to be treated as a death in custody. Now what the family and we want to know is who did the good doctor speak to? Did he speak directly to one of the coroners? Or did he speak, perhaps, to the coroner's constable? A rather quaint term. Did he, in fact, speak to one of the clerks? Did he speak with the, the cleaner? We've got no idea who he spoke to. So acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Gadigal people, and to acknowledge that this land was stolen, but that they never gave it up. I want to say also that you look at what's happened with this most recent tragic death in police custody, and it is a death in police custody, regardless of where the poor man actually died, the fact that he died in a hospital, who put him there? It was the cops. And so this is yet another death on the hands of the Australian state, on the Australian police force, on the Australian, on the Australian prison system. These deaths have been going on for over 200 years. They've been going on since invasion. And yet people like us have got still, after two, more than 200 years, to stand up to say that we will not let these deaths go unmarked. We will not let the Australian government and their police force and their prison systems, we will not let them say that these deaths never happened. Because the number of deaths, the rate of Aboriginal deaths in custody has gone up since they inquired into it. And that's an absolute shame. And so I think that when we put these crimes, and they, they're kind of war crimes, aren't they? The undeclared war against Aboriginal people. These are war crimes that the Australian government is is responsible for. And it's not the only war crimes. People will probably know two days ago, earlier this week, a Tamil man who had sought refuge in Australia was deported back to Sri Lanka. And he never made it through the airport. 
The Australian government sent him back to torture and possibly death at the hands of the criminal Raja Paksa government, which the Australian government, of course, supports to the hilt. Just as the Australian government provides tasers and weapons and so on for the police force and the prison system to brutalise and kill Aboriginal people, so they provide all kinds of weaponry and surveillance equipment and so on for the Sri Lankan government to persecute their own people. Another war crime. And so I think we're here today to mark another death in custody, but we should make sure that we come back again and again, that we make the point again and again that these deaths are not ones that will go unremarked. They're not deaths that shouldn't be noted. They're deaths that should be on the hands of the Australian state and that we are here to make sure that those deaths are accounted for. Yeah, yeah. Rachel from the Socialist Alliance. Thanks. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Well, I pay my respects past and present, present to the Aboriginal elders. I pay my respects to the Aboriginal resistors, of which we have Ray Jackson here today, but the Aboriginal resistors to the genocide which the British colonialists tried to reap upon the Aboriginal people of this country. Shame Britain, shame. Shame Australian government, shame. The genocide still continues because it's once per month that an Aboriginal person is died or neglected or killed in custody. And since 1990, there was a Royal Commission into deaths in custody. Since 1990, nothing has changed. No substantial difference has taken place. In fact, actually, there have been a rise in deaths in custody since 1990. Again, shame Australian government, shame. shame. There's been a rise, but also there has been not one, not one police officer has been charged with manslaughter or murder. Not one prison warden, not one prison guard has been charged with neglect, uh, with manslaughter or with murder. Shame. Shame! And it's because this white Australia, this racist Australia, looks at Aboriginal people's lives and says they are worth nothing. Well, to us, they are worth a lot. And that's why we are here today. And I congratulate everyone who has come here. And I say very, very loudly, very clearly, I and my organisation, will we, we will be here every time there is another murder in custody. We will be here activating and encouraging people to join with us to raise the flag of the Aboriginal people and justice. And until justice is done, we will not rest. Shame, Australia, shame. Gillard and Company should be locked up for, uh, for crimes against humanity in relation to Aboriginal people and refugee people. And dare to struggle, dare to win. If we don't fight, we'll lose. And see you again soon.